Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Van, producer and DJ, co-founder of Vicious Vinyl and of course one time member of Madison Avenue. Hello. Hello. I'm Robbie. Isn't it great? And look at that jacket. Gosh, that is glorious. Who was at the Arias 20 years ago? See? That's pathetic. Not too many. That's, That's pathetic. not good. I was there. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Can you believe it's 20 years? Um, yes and no. I've uh, done a lot of things, but I've also... Can't believe the time went that quick, but yeah. I've you know, run a record label. We signed artists like Avicii, yeah. uh, Picking Duck. They've Bob done all right. Yeah, yes, they've done all right. Yeah. Those, those artists, and some, some of the people here may have heard of them. <laughs> well, maybe a few of them. Um, I am interested to know from you, because Don't Call Me Baby was a little bit like some of the songs that we're seeing tonight, which just exploded across the board around Australia and you know, overseas as well. Yes. And what the advice would be to those folk as it's happening. Because I can imagine it would be a little bit like a truck hitting you. Um, I call it a runaway train. Yeah. Um, so when we were number one, we, well, we were released in Australia and then we were released in the UK. And the first time it didn't actually do as well in the UK and then it got re-released in the UK and went straight to number one. And within maybe two weeks of it being number one, we had six world tours underway. Um, maybe 150 interviews in a few days. Um, it was absolutely bananas. I always remember one time we were in Poland and we landed in Poland, did 27 interviews and then just left. <laughs> I didn't see a single thing but yeah. of Tarago and the inside of a hotel room. So, But it was good fun. Yeah, but it's also taxing. Yes, and I was just about to say the advice um, is enjoy it while you can. Um, and have a good manager that doesn't run you into the ground because it's really easy to be run into the ground. And if you can't handle that, um, I was lucky that I could, but some people maybe can't handle that really, really rigorous timeline. Yeah. And dance music 20 years on, it's, a, it's had a funny... Um, it's had a funny growth, hasn't it? Because it, it was obviously very big in the, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, but yeah. it was far more niche and, so, and now it's... Uh, it's huge, especially in the States. That's, that's really mainstream. Yes. Um, and I guess being across it like that, what's been your experience? Um, well, I think it's good. I think it's good that it's um, remained part of the scene. Obviously, pop music has connected. Artists who are here tonight, Dua Lipa, yeah. her, I've been told her, her entire new album is disco-based. Her, her first single, which yeah. is amazing, is a, like a beautiful piece of disco work. Yeah, good. Um, and I love it. And I think there's quite a lot of artists that are connecting with that. Obviously, Daft Punk had a massive hit. Um, there are, you know, Calvin Harris has had a, a great run with uh, disco riffs. So, and I've always loved disco. So I don't know why, mm. but I've, I've always had that connection. Yeah. Do you like to dance? Uh, not really. I like to DJ. Yeah. But, okay. uh, I'm on the other side of the dance floor. You, surely you must like to dance a little bit when nobody's oh, there. Yeah, I kind of groove. Yeah, I bet you do. Yes. Right. Hey, uh, thanks for coming up uh, this evening. Enjoy the rest of the night, won't you, ladies and gentlemen? Thank please you. thank Andy Van. All right. Thank you. Thank you.